Anymore, most of my automated tasks are done using Power Query instead of VBA. Power Query is more straightforward, more reliable, and you rarely have to tweak any code. For this video tutorial, you have a series of similar workbooks. Each workbook has a single worksheet and contains invoice information for one month. Of course, each month's workbook will have a different number of rows, but since the file is generated by some enterprise system somewhere, the columns remain constant from month to month. Your manager would like to see a report showing revenue by product by month. He wants products down the side and months across the top. You've set up a folder called C, Invoice Registers, and so far you have six monthly workbooks in that folder. Suppose that every month a new workbook is added to this folder. All the workbooks look similar. Each workbook has the same columns but a different number of rows. Start with a blank workbook in one worksheet. Select Data, Get Data, From File, From Folder. Power Query asks you to browse for your folder. Find C. Invoice registers and click OK. Power Query shows you a list of files. Open the Combine drop-down menu and choose to combine and transform data. The next step is a little unusual. A large but blank preview appears. You have to select a sample file and then a worksheet within that file. The default sample file is first file, and that is fine. When you click on sheet 1 on the left panel, the preview appears. Power Query shows you a preview of one of the workbooks. Click OK. The Power Query Editor appears. A new column has been added to the left of your data with a heading source.name. This shows you which column the row came from. That might be nice one day, but it is not needed for today's project. The goal today is to produce a report with a product, month, and revenue. Click on the heading of the product, and then while pressing Control, click Date and Revenue to select those three columns. You choose the columns that you want to keep. In the Power Query Home tab, open the Remove Columns drop-down menu and choose Remove Other Columns. Choosing Remove Other Columns is a better option than removing each individual column. One day, perhaps a year from now, the IT department will add an extra column for something. By choosing to remove other columns, you ensure that the new column is deleted. The invoice files had daily dates. You need to convert those to month ending dates. If you are a Power Query wizard, you would not have to look up the fact that this formula is date.endofmonth date. But you don't have to learn that function name or try to keep with it in upper and lower case. Instead, you can use the Power Query analog of Flash Fill called Columns from Examples. Select the date column. On the Add Column tab, Open the Column from Examples drop-down menu and choose From Selection. When you use Column from Examples, the new column appears at the far right of the screen. Since the first record is from the 1st of April 2022, we'll use April 30th, 2022 as the example. Type April 30th, 2022 and click on End of Month. Click OK. Excel adds a new column. Earlier I suggested that Column from Examples is similar to Flash Fill in Excel. It actually runs circles around Flash Fill. After you choose how to populate the column, Power Query inserts the correct formula so the calculation can happen again next time. At this point, you have Product, Date, Revenue, and End of Month. Right-click Date and Remove Column.
Sort the end of the month column in ascending order. You can do it from the Home tab in this little button. You will notice a few rows that say Null all across the way. These were caused by blank rows in each invoice file. Open the filter icon for end of month and clear the Null option by unchecking this box. Stop and consider what has happened so far. You have combined records from all six workbooks. You've deleted unnecessary columns. You've done a calculation to convert date to end of month. At this point, you could close and load and do the final pivot table in Excel. But you can also do the pivot action right here in Power Query. Select the end of month column. On the Transform tab, choose Pivot Column. Pivoting in Power Query is a bit different than in regular Excel. Specify the values column as Revenue. Any other columns in the dataset will become Row Fields. If you open the Advanced Options, there is a drop-down menu where you can specify how revenue should be aggregated. The default of Sum works in this case. Press OK. The result looks great and you will see those in a moment. But just getting the report from this first day of the data is not the important part. Study the applied steps on the right side of the screen. This is a list of everything you did to produce the report. Click on any item to see the data as it appears at that step. Click any gear icon to see the choices you made at that step. Are these the steps the macro? No. Go to the View tab in Power Query and choose Advanced Editor. This is the macro written in the language called M. Here is the result of pivoting the data. Somehow there were some months with no sales of doodads. Those showed up as null. You can replace values to change null to a zero. You can do that from the Transform tab. Replace values buttons. And here you can replace null to zero. Press the Close and Load button. You have two choices for running the macro in the future. You can click the Refresh icon at the bottom of the Queries and Connections panel as shown here. But here is the thing. If you were producing this report for your manager, you could not trust him or her to click the Refresh button. Here is a better way. Right-click the Invoice Registers query and choose Properties. In the Query Properties dialog box, choose Refresh Data when opening the file. The last step is to save your workbook. Great! Two months later, your folder of invoice registers now has eight workbooks. When you open the workbook, the Power Query steps and will run your report and will be updated to include July and August. This is fairly impressive.